This photo that I've titled Garden Spider vs. Grubworm is one that, honestly, I'm, <laughs> I like it a lot. Um, it turned out almost exactly how I pictured it in my mind as I was taking the photo, and I'm, I'm really pleased with it. A uh, little bit of background. It was a, a mid-September morning. My brother Tom and his wife were visiting, and we went outside on a Saturday, me and Tom and my son, and we're just playing around in the yard because it was nice weather. Uh, we noticed that there was this big web in the corner of the yard or on the side of the yard that this garden spider had built overnight between a, a shrub or a bush and the fence. Now, these garden spiders, we've got them here in the south region of the United States. They're about as big with their their legs stretched out. They're about as big as the palm of your hand or bigger. And I don't think they're all that poisonous, but they look scary. And if you were to come across one, you might get a little freaked out. We did some checking and found out they're not poisonous. Well, not I don't think they are, if I remember correctly. Um, but regardless, we decided we would just let it be off in the corner of the yard and not bother it, except we figured we would give it some food and have a little ex science nature experiment. So we looked around for something we could give it, and we, we really did want to give it some actual food, not like a stick or something. We found a grub worm, and that did the trick. Um, my brother dropped the grub worm. For the record, we tried a couple different things. Um, we looked for crickets and um, grasshoppers. I almost caught a cricket, and then it got away. Tom managed to get the scrub worm. So all credit goes to Tom for this photo, really. Um, he managed to get the grub worm in the web, and boy, did that ever do the trick. That spider just hopped right over and wrapped that thing up. It was just like in uh, Lord of the Rings when Frodo gets wrapped up in the, in the, uh, the, big, the big spider Shilob when the, he gets wrapped up by her web and all that. Just like that, um, only on a much smaller scale. And we're sitting there just standing there watching this happen. I ran inside and grabbed the camera, and I wanted to get a picture of this. The problem, though, is when you got a 50 millimeter lens, you can't, you have to move yourself a lot. And in this particular situation, I was fairly constrained. I had to get in there really nice and close to get a picture, but I didn't want to get in so close that I disturbed the spider. And I also didn't want to get in so close that I bumped the web or anything like that. So I had to kind of crawl around the bushes and peek in and, and uh, look at it from different angles. Um, there was also the issue of lighting. If you look on the left-hand side, you'll notice that the web has this nice glow to it. That's because the sun was low on the horizon. And so as I'm trying to get a good angle on the shot, I also had to keep the lighting in mind because I didn't want the spider to be completely blown out by the lighting or to everything to be uh, cast in shadow. So I had to keep all these things in mind. I also didn't motor drive, which means uh, hold the button down and just let it click, 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 click. I wanted to be careful about the shots I was going to take because um, I, I guess I just wanted to plan it out a little more. Um, in the end, I ended up with about one or two dozen photos, sifted through them, and found that I, I really liked this one. I liked the composition. I liked that the spider's in the middle and pretty, uh, pretty sharp in focus. Uh, you got some nice foreground and background going on. Um, there's some really good depth of field. And I, I like the, the way the lighting looks as well. There's some more photos on Flickr. I think I've got a couple more, maybe two or three more. So if you click through, you can see some more, including one that we, we fed this thing. Over the next 10 days or so, this spider stuck around. And every couple of days, we'd go out and feed it something. And uh, we found this massive grasshopper, uh, much bigger than the spider. Uh, it was like the size of a couple little smokies that you might find at the store. And we found this massive grasshopper, put it in the web, and sure enough, that spider just went at it and uh, wrapped it all up and sucked all the juices out or whatever spiders do. But that was awesome. It was like we're watching the Nature Channel in our very own backyard. So it was really cool. And to be honest, I don't know that we would have taken that much notice of all this had I not been thinking about this from a photography angle. And so I, I say that to illustrate that sometimes photography can make you see the world differently. It can force you to look at things in a way that you might not otherwise see. And that's one of the, one of the magical elements of photography, if we want to wax poetic here.